Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence we feel in this place right now. Lord, I pray, God, as the word goes forth, that, Lord, you would empty us of us, that you would take out all those things, Lord, in our life that doesn't need to be there. That, Lord, we can make room for you and your provision and your glory and the power of the Holy Spirit to be revealed in our life in a fresh way, in a new way, God, in a way like we've never known before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. You can be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Appreciate you so much for being here today. We're going to come in just a, a little bit. We're going to have a prayer line. I believe the Lord has kind of directed me that way for the altar. And I believe God is going to fill this church in a way like you have never been filled before. Amen. But before we can be filled, something has to happen first. On this road, as we conclude today this sermon series that we started at the beginning of the year called The End of Me, today we're going to talk about we must be empty in order to be filled. Can somebody say amen? The end of me. What does it mean to die to ourselves? And the scripture text we've been using for the past uh, four weeks, including today, has been John chapter 3, verse number 30. And it says, he must increase. Is anybody looking for a greater outpouring, a greater measure, a greater presence of the, the Spirit of God and the glory of God in your life than you have known in 2017 or 2016. I want 2018 to be a year of an outpouring of the power of God like I have never known in my life, like this church has never experienced in the past. I pray that the, 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 the latter temple will be greater, the glory, than that of the former temple. God must increase. He must increase. But in order for that to happen, what must happen first? I must decrease. He's got to become greater and greater while I, the flesh, while me becomes less and less. What's the road to the end of me? The first week we talked about one path is through the, the pathway of brokenness. Do we all experience those broken times in our life, but we find out it's in those moments that we are truly made whole. We go through, through paths of mourning. We shed some tears in this life. But we find out in those times, man, that we experience a comfort like we have never known before. We're broken. We mourn. We experience joy and strength and comfort from the Lord. Last week we talked about a, a pathway to the end of me is being authentic. It's being real. It's being real with God already knows our issues, right? So we might as well be real and authentic with Him and confess and be forgiven and restored. And this morning again, we're going to talk about that we must be empty in order to be filled. How many know you got to be empty of you if you expect to be filled with Him? Amen. Empty to be filled. Those things almost seem like polar opposites. How can you be empty and be filled at the same time? They seem like they're a complete contradiction. But we must be empty of ourselves. We must be empty of this world. We must be empty as a, of, of the pursuits of this life, the pursuits of the flesh, in order to be filled with the promises and the purpose and the power of God in our life. And you know, life has a way of emptying us out. Life has a way of, of pouring us out sometimes. We go through struggles, we, we go through difficulties, we go through challenges and, and, and life just pours us out and we find ourselves sometimes in, in a place where we, we have nothing and we want for nothing and we hope for nothing and almost in a place of despair, completely left empty by the struggles and the trials of this life. But what if I told you that being empty was the exact position that God wants you to be in, that God wants your life to be empty. Why? Why would God want us to be empty? Here's why. God loves to fill empty things. Look at your neighbor and tell them that God come to fill you if you're empty today. He loves to fill empty things. Look at the story from the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. When there's a little widow woman, her husband's died, he's left her in such debt that she can't pay the bills. The Bible said that Elisha comes to her house and he says, I want you to, to cook me a cake. And she said, cook you a cake? 
All I've got is a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. And the only thing I can do is make a couple cakes for me and my two boys, and then we're going to die. And Elisha says, well, how about this? Why don't you go around and collect some empty vessels? Why don't you go collect some, some jars, but, but not just any kind of jar. They had to be empty jars. That's what he said in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 3. He says, go around and ask all of your neighbors for empty vessels. And don't ask for just a few. So go and get all the vessels you can get your hands on. The only requirement is they have to be empty. All of a sudden, her house is filled with these empty jars. And when she began to pour that little bit of oil into those empty jars, how many know the oil did not stop running until every jar had been filled? So her home is filled with empty jars, and all of these jars become filled with oil. Why? Because God loves to fill empty things. Look at his first miracle. He goes to the wedding at the Cana of Galilee, and what happens? They run out of wine. And the Bible says just by chance, there happened to be six stone water jars sitting nearby. But they weren't just any kind of water jars. They were empty water jars. Jesus comes on the scene. Loves to fill empty things. Somebody go get me those empty jars and fill them with water. And I'm going to turn the water into wine. But not just any kind of wine. The Bible said he turned it into the best wine. Why? Because God doesn't just fill your emptiness. He fills it with joy and abundance because God is a filler of empty places. He met the woman by Jacob's well whose life was empty. And what did he do? He filled her with life-giving water. He came upon a multitude whose stomachs were empty. And what did he do? He fed them and filled them with just two fish and five loaves of bread. He came upon the adulterous woman whose faith was empty. And what did he do? He filled her with a hope like she had never known before. Why are you telling us all that, preacher? To tell you this, God loves to fill empty things. If you're empty today, you are in the best position to be filled by God hallelujah he loves to fill empty things what does Romans chapter 15 verse number 13 tell us the God of hope will fill you somebody say fill me Lord he will fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. How many know that old song we sing from time to time? It says, just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Fill me up, Lord, until I overflow. He will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit until you overflow. Because he loves to fill Empty things, praise God. But you know what, what is astonishing to me? Is there are just as many people in the Bible that came to Christ empty and left filled as there are that came full and left empty. Take the Pharisees, for example. They were so full of rules and laws, and ideologies, that they had no room for Christ. They, they could not see their hand in front of their face. Jesus described them as having eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear that the Messiah that they were longing for was standing five feet in front of their face. What happened? They came full, and they left empty. How about the rich young ruler? Anybody know his name? Me neither. All we know him by is his title. Rich, young, ruler. But we can obviously tell just from the description used in the Bible that his life is full, Kathy. 
He's rich. Matthew actually said he's got great possessions, wealth, and property. So he's rich. Number two, he's young. So he's got good health, probably good looking. He, he, he's in the prime of his life. He's rich, he's young, and he's a ruler. He's got prestige, he's got honor, he's well known among people. He's got fame and fortune. What more could a man want? But then he comes face to face with Jesus. Christ gives him the opportunity, the invitation. Won't you give everything you've got away and come follow me? The Bible said he turned down the offer from Christ and he went away sorrowful. You got all that going for you and you leave sorrowful. Why? Because he came full, but he left empty. How many know there is a grave difference between a vessel that is full and one that is being filled? See, all of these jars, these, these cups, these bowls, the, all of these vessels around this altar, they are empty today. They are available to be filled by something. But this is a vessel that is already full. And what happens when you try to put something else in this vessel? Something's got to give. Something's got to move out of the way. See, this vessel represents a life that, that is already filled with relationships. A life that is already filled with, with, with chasing after the things that this world can provide. A life that, that is already filled with my career. I've just got so much going on in my life right now. I hardly have room for the Lord. I, I hardly have room to do the things that he's called me to do. Why? Because this vessel is already filling my life up. There's a vessel that's already full. I'm chasing after everything that, man, this world can give me. I go to church on a Wednesday night. Man, I'm just, I'm just too busy. I'm trying to climb that corporate ladder at work, and I, I'm working all the overtime I can work and bring my kids to Sunday school. Why? My life's already too full. Try to pray at home, read my Bible at home. You're talking about fasting for three weeks, preacher, come on. Who's got time for that? Because my life, it's already too full. In and of themselves, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. There's nothing wrong with having a career. Nothing wrong with having a good relationship. Nothing wrong with, with chasing after maybe a dream. But here's the thing. That thing becomes an idol in your life when it begins to take up the space and the property that God wanted to fill with himself. Here's the question I have for you today. Are you full already? Or are you a life that is empty? Which one of these cups are you here today? Are you this one? Are you a life that is empty? That I've taken out all the things that man would take up the space in my heart that God wants to fill with himself and I've made myself available. I've emptied me of me so that I can be filled with him. Or are you one of these vessels that's already full? Man, my life's running over. Man, to look at me, you think I got it all together, man. I'm always busy, always got something happening. But who's got time for all these extracurricular things? Who's got time, man, at home? Who's got time for all? I, yeah, there's just no room left. Because my life's full already. Let me introduce you to a man, Ken Mansfield. He was the head in the 1960s of the Record industry, the, the, the record uh, makers here in America for a little no-name group called the Beatles. This man had it all. Multiple homes, summer homes, spring homes, fall homes, servants. He had people that drove him around, gardeners. He had everything, money, wealth, everything you could think of a man could want in life. 
fortune, fame, women, the career, the, 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 the lifestyle. He had it all. But he said he never realized that his life was so full, but he was really empty. And he said in, in just a very short amount of time, he, his career stopped. His homes got taken away. He lost the cars. He lost the drivers, the gardeners, the money. He spent one night on the streets. Went from the peak of his profession to being homeless. And he said, I thought, man, God was punishing me that all this stuff was happening, you know, because the life that I'd lived. But he said, I realized this was really a blessing in disguise. Because God was emptying all that stuff out of me. He was emptying me of me so that I could be filled with him. Ken Mansfield was introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ. He fell on his knees when there was finally room for the Lord. He fell on his knees and repented. He is a born-again believer today as we sit here in the church, probably preaching somewhere around the United States of America because now he's an ordained minister and he travels the United States encouraging people to empty themselves of themselves so that they may be filled to overflowing by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said nothing in this world can satisfy like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus then silver or gold, empty me of me so that I can be filled with you, Lord. Filled with you. I'm going to skip that video, Daryl. Let's go to the three points because I want to have prayer. There's three things that will happen on the road to the end of me. And the first is you will get an invitation. Don't you love to get invitations in the mail? Somebody thinks enough of you, they'd send you an invite to come to their party or come to their housewarming shower. Come to a, an invitation, but not from just your neighbor. You get an invitation from the Lord God Almighty. There's a parable told in the 14th chapter of the book of Luke. It says, Luke 14, 16, and 17, a certain man was preparing a great banquet. And so he invited many guests. It said he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come now, because everything has been made ready. We understand, man, the, the, the host that is preparing this great banquet is none other than our Heavenly Father. And the servant that is sent out to, to issue the invitation is the Lord Jesus Christ. I like what Billy Graham said. He said, the Bible is nothing more than a book of invitations from God to mankind. Aren't you glad that God didn't have to, but he graciously, he willingly threw open the windows of heaven and declared, whosoever will, you can come to the great banquet table of God. An invitation. What does he invite us to do? He invites us to rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. He invites us to follow him in Mark 1, 17. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He invites us to live in him. John 15, 4, abide in me and I will abide in you. And finally he invites us to empty ourselves of us and to find real life in him. Colossians 3 3 says, For you have died to this old life, and your real life is now hidden with Christ in God. Can I tell you, you have an invitation today to experience real life, to experience a purpose-filled life, to experience a hope-sustained life that can only be found at the end of me. That's what Paul experienced. On the road to Damascus, he comes face to face. With the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, look, Saul, what you're chasing after, what your life is already filled with, is the pursuits of your own deceitful heart. But he said, I'm giving you an opportunity today. I am issuing you a cordial invitation to lay aside Saul. 
to empty out Saul, to empty out the pursuits of your heart, of Saul's heart, and to bear my name and to carry the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ back to my people. And what happened that day? Saul emptied out Saul of Tarsus, and he was replaced with Paul, a bond slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. That one invitation from God caused him to experience the purpose and the plan and the joy and the peace, a real life, a sustaining life, a fulfilled life that can only come at the end of me when we're willing to empty out me in order to be filled with him. We receive an invitation. The second thing that we experience, every one of us better experience, is elimination. We get an invitation, and then we experience elimination. The Bible said all those folks that got that invite, they began to respond. You know what they said, man, Lord, I'm willing to lay down everything. I'm willing to walk away from everything that this life may offer just for the chance, the opportunity to come dine with you. Is that what they said? Luke 14, 18 through 20 says, They all began to make excuses. Boy, aren't we good at that? I just can't help it. You know, i got all this stuff going on in my life. You know, God knows my heart. I'm chasing after this and after that, and I just ain't got time for... Well, we, we can make excuses, can't we? One said, I just bought a field. I, I got to go inspect it. One said, I just bought five pair of oxen. I want to go try them out. I want to go work my oxen. Another said, I've got a new wife. I can't come either. Here's an invitation to a, a feast. The great banquet table. No requirement. Just show up. But everybody's just too busy. Their lives are just too full already. One's got a new field. One's got a new job. One's got a new wife. Who's got room, you know, for, for anything else? All those things, again, nothing wrong with them by themselves, but they're taking up the space. They're, they're, they're inhabiting the area that God longs, wants to fill with Himself. We've been issued an invitation to an abundant life with Christ. How many of our lives are too full already? The pursuits of life, the pursuits of this world, the pursuits of the flesh to make room. How many of you have seen the show Hoarders? That's a disturbing show. You see these people, man, their, their, their basements are full. Their garages are full. Their attics are full. Man, their bedroom, everything is, is chug full. But you know what most of those people experience? Emptiness. It's like eating a big old Chinese meal. Anybody like Chinese besides me? I can go to King Buffet, repent by the time I leave because I'm so full. But in 30 minutes, I am hungry again. You know, the, it just don't last. So, so the pursuits of this life are like that. Man, we chase after cars and money and wealth and women and people and careers. We chase all those things and our lives are full at first. But give it a week and we're on another chase. We're on another hunt. Why? Because those things will not satisfy. Because God is the filler of your life. God is the sustainer of my faith. He is the giver of life. He is the one that will fill us to overflowing if we will allow him. He is the filler of our lives. He longs to fill empty things. You know what, you know what Paul called all the stuff that filled up his life prior to knowing Christ go read it it might make you blush he said all the things that filled up his life before Christ were garbage they were rubbish they were refuse they were dung 
that's how he compared every pursuit of his life. What does it profit a man if he can gain the whole world, if your life is full? But when you come to Jesus, if you leave empty, what does it profit a man? Paul said those things are worthless. They are useless when compared to knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. To experiencing the fullness that only comes from a right relationship with him. I like what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. He said, do not get drunk on wine. In other words, stop trying to fill up yourself. You can chase after things in this life that will make you think you're full. But don't do those things, Paul said. But instead, there is an alternative There is a feeling that will last forever. He said, instead, be ye filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want to do, a continual feeling of God's power. I want to come to the end of me until I am completely saturated, till I am filled from the top of my head to the soles of my feet with the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life. You know what these empty vessels cannot do? They cannot fill themselves. The only thing this empty vessel can do is position itself to be filled. And that's all God requires of us is that we position ourselves. How do you do that? By emptying me of me. So that I can be filled with him. Some of us need to take out the trash. What is competing with God for your time, your attention, your energy, your affection? What is taking up those places in your life that God wants to fill with himself? I'm here to tell somebody, you need to take out the trash. We need some elimination in our life. We get an invitation. We need to experience elimination. And finally, at the end of me, you will experience what you've longed for the entire time. And that is true Gratification. I'm closing with this if they want to come back. Another word you could use there instead of gratification would be satisfaction. A a fulfilled life. You finally come face to face. You finally experience the one thing that all along had the potential to satisfy the longing of your heart. That is the presence of And the power of God. That parable ended in Luke 14. It said, the the, uh, host told the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges. Go wherever you need to go. And you invite whosoever will that they come. He didn't care if they were lost. He didn't care if they were hurt. He didn't care if they were lame. If they were sick, if they had stumbled along the way, if they were broken, if they were mourning. He didn't care. There was only one requirement to come to the banquet table of God. And that was you got to be empty. All I want you to do is go find some hungry people. Go find me some people. That are more hungry for a move of my spirit than they are for a plate full of food. Go find me some people that are just hungry. The only prerequisite that I require is that they're empty and they need to be filled. You go find them so that my house may be full. D.L. Moody said something so powerful. He said, I firmly believe the moment our hearts are empty to pride, selfishness, ambition, anything that is contrary to God's law, the Holy Spirit will then come 
and fill every corner of our hearts. Listen, but he said, I also believe that many a man is praying for God to fill him when he is full already with something else. How empty are you today? How available are you? And only you can answer this question. To be filled by God. I would say this. The measure of the filling you receive is in direct proportion to your level of emptiness. I'm going to say that again. The measure... A feeling that you will receive from God, it is directly related to your level of emptiness. How do you know? Go back to the story with the widow woman and Elisha. He said, you go get some empty vessels. Don't ask for just a few. Get as many as you can. And the Bible said the oil ran until the last vessel had been filled so what do I believe I believe if there had been Helen one more vessel the oil would have continued to flow let me say it like this if there had been more room the oil of God would have continued to fill and so it is with us Man, you can chase after. It's your life. It's your choice. You can chase after all the things that you want. You can fill your life with all the things that you want. But D.L. Moody, what did he say? Man, many a man is praying for God to fill him when his life. There's just no room. But the more empty you are, faith, the more oil. The more empty we become, the more filled by God we shall receive. Here's what I'm going to do this morning. We're going to do two things in this altar. Number one, I'm going to play a song by Chris Sly in just a moment. And the song simply says, Empty me of me so that I can be filled with you. And if that's really your heart's desire, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you right where you are. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to bow your head if you want to turn around and make an altar right there at your seat, if you want to sit there, whatever. But I want you to pray, and I want you to mean it with all your heart. God, empty everything out of my life that does not bring glory and honor to you. If there's anything, if there's pursuits in my heart that I'm chasing after that are taking up the space that you want to fill with you, I pray that you would empty me of me. Empty out all the things that need to be emptied out. If it's sin in your life, repent in this moment. Ask Him to empty you of the desire and the gratification of the flesh. To empty me of me so that I can be filled with you. And at the end of this song, I'm going to ask our elders, our ministers to come down. We're going to make a prayer line. For all you that want, I'm going to invite you to come through this line and we're going to lay hands on you. And I'm going to pray now that all those empty places in your life they would be filled by the power and the presence and the glory of God like you've never experienced before. In Jesus' name. We're going to start this song. Right where you are, would you pray and ask God to empty you of you so that you can be filled with Him.